Hey guys, how are you? This is Dr. Kim. So today, why don't we together evaluate this edentulous site that's going to be receiving dental implant? So you're looking at an edentulous site of number 20. Number 19 has a crown, number 20 is missing, and here we have 21. Alveolar crest appears to have healed and remodeled. You can see the cortical line across the alveolar crest. And look at the underlying trabecular bone. What would be your assessment? How would this area appear under Comim CT? If you only had this periapical radiograph, how comfortable do you feel about placing the implant? Do you expect the ridge to be tall, well at least we don't seem to see a lot of bone loss, right? Do you expect the ridge to be thick? What about the bone quality? What about the mandibular canal or the mental foramen? What can we say about that on this periapical radiograph? Can you see it well? Can you not? If you think you see it, where would you point? Where do you think it's located? So those are some of the questions that I want you to quickly think about as I was mentioning. Now let's take a look at this site under Comim CT. Here we have that scan um, where I have conveniently traced the mandibular canal already. Right from this 3D rendering, it should be clear that there is a mental foramen. Not only I trace the mental uh, foramen, the nerve that's exiting through the mental foramen, I trace part of the incisive nerve as well. So it would be a vital importance to not to injure this area uh, when you're placing an implant. Let's go ahead and start with uh, axial view, like I always do. So let's get up to the top. I'm going to turn on my axial plane just so that you guys know which plane I'm looking at. So let's scroll down. Here we're seeing the crowns of the mandibular teeth. Moving inferiorly, we're seeing the ridge. This is the area of interest. Looks like there's a slight uh, loss of the width of the ridge. There's a depression. The cortex, buccal cortex is intact, so is the lingual cortical plate with underlying bone that appears relatively normal. And you can still see the outline of the lamina dura. And here is the mental foramen. I'm going to hide the trace tracing. Here is that mental foramen. And you can see the nerve. Why don't we look at this in the coronal view or cross-sectional view. Let's move it to the anterior and now scroll posteriorly. There you go. So that's number 21. Here we're at this side of number 20. What we see is that mental foramen exiting superior laterally as they always do. But I want you to take a moment to look at the overall shape of the ridge. This site has a very prominent sublingual undercut or sublingual gland fossa, which isn't always the case, but this patient, there is a very severe undercut, such that the width of the ridge at this level, mid-level of the alveolar process, is much narrower than what you see clinically. So which can give you a false perception that the width of the ridge you see clinically may extend inferiorly with the same thickness of the proce alveolar process. That's not the case for this patient. It becomes dramatically narrower. Let me go ahead and measure the ridge. So at about here, we're measuring 9.68, close to 10 millimeter. At its narrowest portion, it's about 5.14. It's almost half the width this 
width of the ridge that's measured at the top. So that's very important. If you're placing an implant in this direction, it's easy without understanding this con concavity, it's easy to perforate the lingual cortex. So that's why it's important to get this cross-sectional image. Now let's look at this in the sagittal view. For your convenience, I'll go ahead and turn on the red plane or the sagittal plane. And let's look at this site. When I'm seeing this, overall bone quality uh, looks very good and has healed normally. You can still vaguely make out the original lamina dura before the extraction. And there's that mental foramen. Let's look at this site in the cross-sectional view. Right here, I have traced uh, the nerves. I'm going to turn on the nerve. So here we have axial view and the reconstructed panoramic radiograph of the volumetric scan and the cross-sectional images along with the 3D rendering. Each of these lines represents the cross-sections that you see here and I have already measured this site. Additionally, over to your right, these red lines represent the measurements that I've done. So for instance, if I were to delete this 18.9595 measurement, so let me go ahead and delete that, what you will see is that this line will disappear. Did you see that? There's, th there's no longer line. So these are the sites that I measured. You can see I have measured just slightly above the mental foramen in order to stay uh, conservative. I did not measure this all the way extending to the nerve. I measured it slightly above the nerve so that we can stay con uh, conservative. So there you go. Just think back what you saw in periapical radiograph and those structures that I asked you to kind of identify and now um, realize how much better and more you can see under Comim CT. Not only the bone quality, uh, but also the position of the mental foramen and the undercut that was not visualized on two-dimensional periapical radiograph. So that's how I work up uh, my implant cases. And I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.